Hello, everyone. Today I'm going to be reading a book called Little Rascal by Sterling North. And I'm going to read the whole book, but not in one setting. So today I will start and it'll probably go for about four more settings. So the book is broken into four major sections. We're going to start out in summer and then we'll go to autumn and we'll go to winter and it'll end up in spring. So let's start hearing about this cute story and I'll show you pictures as we go. And on the first page, there's a boy and it looks like he's got a pet raccoon and he's feeding the raccoon with something. Let's see what he's feeding this little baby raccoon with. And how did he get the raccoon? All right, let's, here we go. How do you feed a baby raccoon weighing less than one pound? Some children feed them with a medicine dropper or a doll's nursing bottle but I fed my tiny, tiny raccoon through a clean straw. I took warm milk in my mouth, then tilted the hollow straw downward to his mouth and watched him suck eagerly. I called my raccoon Rascal because he was such a mischief. He had gleaming black eyes, a mask like a little bandit, and five black rings around his fluffy tail. His whisper trills were full of wonder and curiosity. In the wide spreading oak tree behind our house, there was a comfortable hole which made a good home for Rascal. Here he dreamed away his first two months sleeping happily between feedings. At the foot of this great tree lay my big St. Bernard Wowser. He was a dependable watchdog who protected all my pets, my little woodchucks, my good little black and white skunk in their cages, my cats of many colors, and even my wicked pet crow named Poe, who liked to steal every shining object he could find and hide these treasures in the belfry of the Methodist church. Wowser was a handsome animal weighing 170 pounds. Wowser was a big dog. It would have been a brave dog or a foolish boy who tried to disturb Wowser's new friend, my little raccoon rascal. One day in June, when cherries were ripe and the whole world cheerful with bird song, Wowser and I heard a quavering trill at the hole in the tree. A moment later, we saw two bright eyes shining from a small black mask. Rascal was peering from the door of his home at the world below, and soon he began backing down the tree like a little bear, tail first. Wowser was worried. He yelped a question or two and glanced up to see what I thought about this new problem. I told my dog not to worry, but to watch what happened. I had a shallow minnow pool not far from the tree. Rascal hurried to the little pond and started fishing. His sensitive hands searched the shallows while his eyes glazed far away as though he were thinking of something entirely different. Soon his clever little hands caught a minnow. A minnow is a tiny little fish. He began washing it back and forth as raccoons do with almost everything they eat. Rascal carried his minnow to the edge of the pool, very pleased with himself and be began eating the small fish in polite little nibbles. Then he started exploring the backyard surrounding the oak tree. Once he pounced on a cricket, a moment later he lay very still while the dark shadow of Poe the Crow swept across the grass. When Rascal came too near to the edge of our green lawn, Wowser pushed him back firmly but gently. Having explored his little world, my raccoon climbed the tree and disappeared into a safe home in the hollow of the oak. He seemed to be perfectly satisfied with his first trip abroad. Wowser sighed with relief. Rascal was again safely in his nest. He had not hurt himself nor run away. Perhaps he would not be the problem that Wowser had feared. Being a rascal sitter was a 24-hour-a-day job. 
My father and I lived alone together in a 10 room house in the little town of Brailsford Junction in Southern Wisconsin. My mother was dead and my two older sisters, Theo and Jessica were living elsewhere. My big brother Herschel was with the American army in France fighting against the Germans in World War I. My father was very kind to me. He let me build my canoe in the living room, keep any number of pets and wander as free as the wind over meadows and hills. I knew that he would not object to having Rascal eat with us at the table. From the attic, I carried down the family high chair last used when I was a baby. At breakfast next morning, I put a shallow earthenware bowl of warm milk on the tray of the high chair. Rascal stood in the chair, placing his hands on the edge of the tray. He could reach the milk easily, and he churred and trilled his satisfaction. He drank his milk, scarcely dribbling a drop. In fact, his table manners were better than those of many children. My father smiled fondly at our new breakfast companion, and I was delighted at Rascal's good behavior. All went well until I offered the raccoon a lump of sugar. Rascal took it between his two hands and began washing it back and forth in his milk. Just as he had washed the minnow. What do you think is going to happen to that sugar? He's putting it in the milk. He thinks he's washing it. Mm. In a moment or two, of course, it melted entirely away. We knew that was going to happen. And you could not imagine a more surprised little raccoon. First, he felt all over the bottom of the bowl to see if he had dropped it. Then he looked in his right hand, no sugar lump. Next, he looked in his left hand, no sugar lump there either. Finally, he turned to me and shrilled a sharp question. Who has stolen his lump of sugar? When I recovered from my laughter, I gave him a second lump. He evidently thought about washing it, but then a shrewd look came over his shining eyes. He took the sugar directly to his mouth and began munching it happily. Rascal was a very bright raccoon. When he learned a lesson, he learned it for life. Never again did he try to wash a lump of sugar. The kitchen screen door had a worn cat and a weak spring. I did not repair them because I wanted my cats to be able to pull the door open to let themselves in or push it from the inside to let themselves out. Rascal was certain he could do anything that a cat could do. Several times he watched them open the door Obviously, the trick was to hook your claws in the screen and pull. Feeling very proud of himself, he, showered, he showed the cats that he was as smart as the oldest and wisest Tom. A few nights later, I was surprised and delighted to hear Rascal's trill. That's like the noise that they make trill from the pillow beside me. Then I felt his little hands exploring my face. My raccoon baby had climbed down from his hole in the tree and had opened the back screen door with eyes that could see in the dark. He had found his way to my downstairs bedroom. Smart little raccoon rascal. There were no very strict rules in our house as both rascal and I realized. My raccoon decided the most comfortable place to sleep was with me. He was as clean as any cat and perfectly housebroken from the start. So for many months, we slept together. I felt less lonesome now when my father went away on business, leaving me all alone in that big 10-room house. A boy, a bicycle, and a little raccoon. Imagine the adventures we had. Rascal had become a speed demon. He liked nothing better than whizzing down a steep hill. This lovable little creature had the heart of a lion. He liked to stand in the basket of my bicycle with his feet braced wide apart and his hands gripping the front rim of the basket. His natural goggles made him look like a racing driver. 
his small button of a nose pointed straight into the wind and his whiskers blew back nearly to his ears as his ringtail streamed out behind. Sometimes he shared the bicycle basket with bunches of crimson, white-tipped radishes, which I raised in my war garden and sold to the grocery store. Once he shared the basket with blooming rose plants. I had dug from the garden to transplant on my mother's grave. The white stone merely said, in memory of Sarah Elizabeth Nelson North, 1866 to 1914. Rascal, of course, could not understand why I felt so sad as I planted the roses around that stone. Sometimes Rascal shared the basket with my box of fishing tackle when we went to the river to fish. Often after these rides, Rascal and I drank strawberry pop. He quickly learned how to lie on his back and hold the bottle in perfect position with all four feet while he drained the last sweet drop. Rascal is one smart and cute little raccoon. I had started to build my canoe in the living room during the previous winter when it was much too cold to work in the barn. The ribs that ran the length of canoe were of clear white pine, fragrant and smooth to the touch. The circular ribs were cut from tough water elm from cheese boxes, which the storekeepers had given me. Naturally, all this canoe building created some disorder and dust in the living room. One day when I was at work on the canoe, a big Stutz Bearcat automobile curved up on our drive and out stepped my beautiful married sister, Theodora. She had brought along one of her maids and enough luggage so that I knew she intended to stay for a while. Theo, Theo, I shouted happily running out to embrace her. Hello, sunny boy, my, you're all covered with sawdust. I'm building a canoe, not in the living room. Theo was already suspicious. Well, you see, Theo, it was too cold in the barn last winter. Merciful heavens, Theo said. Now help Jenny with the lunch and put it in the downstairs bed. I love this beautiful auburn-haired sister of mine, but I was a little afraid of her too. She had taught me to jump up like a jack-in-the-box whenever an older person entered the room and for a time after my mother's death, she had dressed me in the Norfolk jackets that were fashionable then. The other boys had laughed at me. At the sight of the living room, she threw up her hands in horror. I've never seen such a mess in my life, she said, but we'll soon fix that. Jenny and I are going to clean this house from top to bottom, and out goes the canoe. We'll hire a full-time housekeeper if we can find one. Can't you just leave us alone? I asked mournfully. Anyhow, you're not my mother. Oh, sonny boy, she said, fighting back the tears. She came around the end of the canoe and kissed me quite tenderly. I didn't mind giving Theo my downstairs bedroom, but my little raccoon didn't understand the new arrangement. That evening after Theo had gone to sleep, Rascal let himself in at the back door and went confidently to our bed and crawled in with Theo. My father and I, who were sleeping upstairs, heard a blood-curdling yell. We rushed downstairs in our pajamas to find Theo standing on a chair, treed by my little raccoon. Rascal blinked up at this crazy human being who was screeching like a fire siren. He always sleeps in my bed, I explained. He's clean and perfectly harmless. You throw that animal right out of the house and hook the screen door so it can't possibly get back in. Well, okay, I said, but you're sleeping in Rascal's bed. Don't be saucy, Theo said. I kept the screen door hooked for the next several nights, but one evening I forgot. Just before dawn, Rascal opened the screen door and went cautiously to Theo's room. He decided not to crawl in with her. He did, however prowl quietly around the bedroom and the adjoining bath. On the wide rim of the lavatory, he found the most beautiful trinket he had ever stolen, my sister's diamond ring. 
raccoons and crows love shiny things and rascal and Poe the crow often fought over treasures I gave to rascal such as bright new pennies. Just before dawn, I heard a crow raccoon fight on the back porch. And when Theo said she had lost her ring, I had a theory about what might have happened. After we had searched the house and yard and gardens, I decided to look in one more place, the belfry of the Methodist church where Poe had his nest. I asked kindly, Reverend Hooten, the Methodist minister, if I could climb the dark shaft to the belfry, and he said I might. The shaft was filled with cobwebs, and some of the cleats were loose. I was afraid that I might fall, but I could not turn back. I reached the airy little room at the top with its widely spaced shutters and its view of the town below. I touched the big deep tone bell, which had been told 47 times for my mother, one for each year of her short life, and which many years later would be told 99 times for my father. I remembered the fragrance of hyacinths at my mother's funeral, and for a few minutes, I forgot all about Theo's diamond ring. Then in a far corner of the belfry, I saw the circle of twigs, leaves, and black feathers that Poe the Crow called home. As some people keep their money in their mattress, Poe had made his bed even more comfortable with a pile of shining possessions that overran the nest and spilled across the floor. Here were some of my best glass marbles, my football whistle, scraps of sheet copper, a second key to our Oldsmobile, and wonder of wonders, Theo's diamond ring. So he found it, thank goodness. I put several of the valuable objects in my pocket, but left the worthless junk, knowing that Poe couldn't tell she copper from a diamond ring. Poe dropped in at about this time. He cawed and cussed in crow language, acting as though I were the thief and he the honest householder. His angry voice followed me as I went down the shaft and out into the sunlight. Theo was so happy to have a ring that she did not insist that I take my canoe to the barn. She even postponed the hiring of a full-time housekeeper. She merely fed us delightful meals and with Jenny's help left the house shining clean. Then with a goodbye kiss and a wave of the hand, she was off again, gallant, beautiful, and brave, her autumn hair shining in the sun. And I'll stop right there, everyone. So far, this story is adorable. We have learned about Rascal, Wowzer, other animals, Poe the Crow. Oh my goodness, so many wonderful characters. Our main character, the boy who owns little rascal his sister his dad we learned that is we knew that he he lived with his mother but now we learned that his mother was only 44 when she died but it sounds like he has a wonderful happy life with his dad so this is the end of the first section and tune in next time and i'll continue reading thanks for listening <music>